So this morning, when I started to dig into Angular's functionality that helps to maintain and retain scroll positions in your single page application, I discovered that as part of the router updates that they provided for that functionality, they added a way for us as developers to differentiate between navigation events that take place because of a user's imperative action, like clicking on one of the router links, or because of a location change action, like the user clicking the back or forward button or changing the URL uh, outside the application or perhaps through a manual change. And that's something I want to look at because I think that's pretty exciting and can actually help build some, some pretty uh, custom functionality. Uh, so to explore, I created an application here. It has a couple of, uh, of routes, and each of these routes has some, uh, some anchor links just for some more exploration. And you'll see that we're injecting our router into the app component here. I'm going to filter all of the events down to the navigation start because those are the ones that we care about. And inside of the subscribe callback here, uh, I'm going to take the event and just dump out a number of the properties. So I'm going to dump out the ID. Now every navigation event gets a unique ID. Every navigation start event gets a unique ID, a monotonically increasing integer. Uh, it also has the URL of the, of the location we're trying to navigate to. And here's where the new stuff comes in. It also has a navigation trigger, which will have things like imperative pop state and hash change. Imperative being the user clicked on a link and now they're going forward to a new browser state or something like pop state where the user clicked on the browser's back or forward button. Uh, and then hash change, I'm not 100% sure what actually triggers hash change. So apologies for not having the, uh, the full mental model there. Um, but if we do click pop state, and it is a type of pop state that goes back to an existing browser state, the event is also going to have this restored state object. The restored state object just contains a navigation ID, and the navigation ID points back to an event ID of the previous navigation event. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in the browser to see how it all kind of fits together. So here I'll just refresh the page. I'm on the home here. You can see I have navigation ID is one. And if I click through to A, you see we get navigation two. If I click through to B, we get navigation three. So we can see that these IDs for the navigation start events are increasing as we click through the app. Uh, you'll also see that the uh, navigation trigger here is imperative because I am the user now clicking through the uh, the uh, links in the application. Now here's the exciting part. If I click the back button, you'll see that the trigger is now pop state and we have a restored state property with an ID of three. And now if we look to what ID of three is back up here in our console history, it's the navigation event that brought us originally to section B. And you can see that's the section B that we're trying to go back to with the browser. And if I click back again, you'll see that we're now back at section A, right? It's pop state because I'm going, uh, I'm navigating via a location change and the restored state ID that we're pointing to is two. And if we scroll back up here, you can see that the navigation ID of two was the original navigation event that brought us to section A. And this works going forward as well. So if I go forward, let's go back to C, all the way to C, you'll see again, it's a pop state, meaning it's a location change uh, based navigation and it's restored state to ID four. And if we scroll up to ID four, again, you can see that that is the original navigation event that brought us to section C. Now, one thing to notice is that the navigation ID is always increasing. So even when we go back to, or when the restored state is for ID four, the ID of the current navigation event is eight. And that's because the router is always rolling forward. It never rolls backwards. So as it's rolling forward, the state that it's in might be a restored state from a previous navigation, but it's still getting unique uh, rolling forward navigation events. So this is pretty exciting. It's um, clearly they put this in in order to do their own uh, restore scroll position so that you know if I'm scrolled down here and I go to section B, I pop up to the top, right? That's powered ultimately by some of this functionality. But the nice thing is, is that we as, de as developers can now use this uh, ability to differentiate between imperative navigation and things like back and forward browser navigation to build some custom functionality. Now, this pop state does not necessarily always go hand in hand with a restored state. So for example, if I manually go in the URL here from section B to section C, you'll see that it is a pop state. 
However, there is no restored state because uh, I'm just manually changing the URL. There's nothing, there's no inherent relationship to the browser history in this case. Um, but you'll see now if I go, let's say back to section B, that's a pop state and it does have a restored state. And you can see that the restored state is navigation ID nine, which again is the navigation that originally brought us to section B. And now if we go forward back to our pop state that didn't have a restored state, you'll see that it is a pop state. We're in section C, it's the restored state of section 10, which you can see was our pop state that originally took us to section C without a restored state. So, uh, you know, again, there's a, there's a few little caveats here to understand, but for the most part, this is pretty awesome. And um, one thing that I don't have a great mental model for yet is why I need to know what the trigger is. Because my thought is, if I know the restored state, then I essentially know whether I'm going back and um, not back in the back forward sense, but back in the I'm dealing with a pre-existing state of the browser history. And if this doesn't exist, then I know I'm rolling forward to a completely new state of the router. Um, I don't know yet what I'm going to do or what I could do with the with the reason that the navigation took place. Uh, but I'm sure that there are uh, reasons to know about that, especially if I'm going to do stuff like scroll to a to an anchor or restore state, which I'm sure is what is actually happening under the hood with things like uh, the anchor scroll that are built into Angular at this point. Anyway, uh, this is exciting for me because I have a polyfill that I have uh, for restoring scroll, uh, which works on an arbitrary collection of scrolls as opposed to just the primary viewport. And um, anyway, that's all there is uh, to this exploration. And uh, I, I, you know, let me show one more thing, and that's that I believe this all works with the, the anchors as well. So here I click down to an anchor, right? I can go to this one. And if I click back, you'll see that again, we get the, um, the, uh, the it's the same kind of concept. It's just that uh, it's now dealing with some of the offset scrolling. Anyway, that's not terribly interesting on top of this, uh, uh, the core exploration here. So. Uh, uh, I'm sure you will see more of this as I take these learnings and try to apply them to, uh, to update my, my retained scroll polyfill.